Well, this morning we're a little low in number, but we got some folks sick. We've had some odd, strange weather this morning. Uh, some of us has got sleet, some of us has got snow, some of us has got a little bit of all three and rain too. Uh, I did hear something interesting this morning. Some of us had hail. Uh, Anything that's frozen, it's not snow, it's hail. Uh, yeah, it's called a, in the South we call that sleet, sleet. <laughs> but that's okay. It's all right. It's ice. I'm not a total y'all yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. We're getting you there and everything, but it's good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Uh, good to see each and every one of you. And uh, Roger, I'm not going to mention about the people sitting with you this Go ahead. morning. Uh, 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 <laughs> No, Roger's got a few people extra. He's got the babies. Yeah, he's got the babies with him. But, uh, <laughs> okay. This is his girlfriend. But uh, we want to get our service started and everything this morning. I hope everyone that made it out, I want to say thank you. I hope you're doing well. This morning, I think we're going to let Miss Crystal just play us one and everything. And, uh, and you just kind of sit there and meditate and thank on God. While she plays us one, we do this every now and then, and then uh, then we'll uh, we'll take some prayer requests and have some prayer time. Crystal, if you would please. <laughs> Sometimes I've been told it's like using a hammer and trying to pull a nail 
to get things out of her sometimes. But bless her heart, y'all just pray for Sister Jean. She's a sweet lady. I mean, you know God can touch her. Amen. Yeah. He heal her. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so just continue to pray for her. Pray that God will reach down and touch her and help her and, uh, and everything. And then uh, pray for Sister Annette. Man, it's unusual for me not to see Sister Annette. Uh, Sister Annette, we talked to her this morning. She's not here, not because of the weather, but she's had a sore throat and a stuffed up head and ain't felt good for a couple of days now. Miss Melissa prayed with her on the phone, so y'all pray for her. Uh, she needs our prayers. Let's pray that God will reach out, touch her, and help her to get better. Uh, she also needs our prayers as she looks after Paul. Amen. Uh, because how many of you know he still has to be looked after even though she's sick? Bless her heart. Uh, and everything, and uh, she still, and I think she does a wonderful job tending to him mm -hmm. and uh, taking care of him. And y'all pray for Brother Paul, Amen. Uh, Brother Paul needs our prayers as well, and uh, he often says that she's his angel, and I love to hear him say that, Amen. Uh, it's good that he has that regard for his wife. So you just pray for both of them. Pray that God will reach down and touch them. Pray for Sister. Uh, I was getting ready to say Sister James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass this off this morning just a little bit. The weather ain't the only thing off. Uh, but y'all pray for Brother James and Sister Marie. Uh, Brother James said that he uh, he had just gotten up when I got off of the exit out here coming in. Uh, Brother James has had a rough night. He said him and Miss Marie both had had a rough night. In the middle of the night, he woke up and his leg was itching and... He couldn't get it to stop, and he got up and put something on it, and it still didn't stop. Finally, he put something else on it, and he finally got it to stop and everything. So, And he got back to sleep and everything. And he said he, right now he still don't have a lot of peace about leaving uh, Miss Marie and everything. She's still kind of weak. She's trying to do her exercises, trying to get some strength back. But just continue to pray for them. Continue to pray for Brother Jerry. Uh, and there's others on our prayer list as well. And Miss Melissa's got a strange look on her face. Uh, uh, if it's something you need to whisper to me and me. No, uh, you remember Tammy, the one you go to the funeral for for her dad. Yes. Uh, the lady there, Marsha Hamlin, she just passed away this morning. Oh, right. uh, she asked if the church could remember my Hamlin family <laughs> in your prayers. Um, Marsha was one of my customers from McDonald's. So well, please don't get emotional. I can't stand to see you get emotional. So, uh, but uh, the thing is, let's just remember the Hamlin family. Uh, they need our prayers. The lady just passed away and everything. So let's pray for that family as well. Uh, have talked to Brother Terry McGee this week. He wants uh, many of you know he's a former, or one of the former pastors of the church. He wants us to pray for him as well. Pray that uh, God will reach down and uh, continue to touch him. He goes back this week to have his numbers checked. Uh, and I want to say something to you. If any of you are friends with Brother Terry on Facebook, I want to let you know that Brother Terry has discontinued his Facebook page. If you want to know why, please see me uh, after service and I'll let you know why. Uh, it's got nothing to do with you or the church or anything. It's a personal reason, so I'll let you know. But uh, he said to let y'all know that he has done away more or less with his Facebook page. So uh, just just continue to pray for him. Been in contact with him. And uh, uh, Pastor's trying to get Brother Terry to come preach for us and everything. And I'll let you know how that goes and everything. So y'all pray about that situation as well. And uh, do we have any other outspoken prayer requests? Miss Wendy. Praise report. Farrell Baptist Church is getting things repaired and built. You know, I told you last week a big old oak tree went through my dad's office and mm -hmm. the water went in the sanctuary, but they still have church. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah they wore swim fins, and his wife was doing better when I was that Amen. Amen. That's good to hear. Y'all continue to pray for Sister Wendy's dad and his church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Miss Ann. Yes, pray for Miss Ann. Miss Ann did have her, has had the feeding tube took out, but uh, we talked to her this morning and she's had two angina attacks during the evening. Her and Sister Jamie were coming. Miss Janie's still there. 
Miss Jane and Cut Lead to just kind of stay home with her sister. But and I, it's understandable, amen. So you just y'all just pray for them. Um, Pastor stopped and visited with them yesterday and got we got it fixed so they can watch the service online on the television. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to watch something at some point during the day. But uh, just pray for them as well and everything, and just continue to pray uh, one for another. Anyone else? Pray for mom because she yes. got vertigo. Yeah, mama's not here this morning. Mama's got vertigo. Uh, she's been battling with this a couple of days now. And of course, Crystal's reached out to their doctor and uh, and everything. So y'all pray for mom. She's been sick during the night and not feeling very well, head spinning and everything else. But she's in good company. The cat's with her this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Boots, he's in the bed with her with his little paws crossed like don't mess with Granny. So, uh, so y'all just uh, y'all just pray for her this morning as well. She wished she could be here. And Uncle William and Aunt Linda. Yes, Uncle William and Aunt Linda continue to pray for them. Aunt Linda has been sick the last few days. We uh, just ten days. Ten days. Can't keep anything down, and if it's not down, it's running out. I don't know any better way to say it than that. So that's rough. Uncle William is doing better. The catheter has been taken out of him. Uh, he's able to go to the bathroom again. He's doing much better there. But just continue to pray for them. They need our prayers. Amen. Also, Tammy just Tammy just said she's having surgery on the 15th, don't know what type to ask for the church to do her uh, prayers. All right, let's remember her in your prayers as well. Anyone else? Crystal. Pray for mine, Serena's husband. Yes. He's going to have his gallbladder removed, plus he's got to have two hernias fixed, too. Mm -hmm. That's a touchy uh, surgery. I've had that done. So, yes, pray for them as well. Anyone else? Remember me, I gotta go see my doctor tomorrow and all. I don't know what the outcome is. All right. I've got a problem with the limbs and all that. All right, let's remember that prayer request as well. Anyone else? Let's remember Mr. Ray this morning. He has yes. a sweet face. That's why he's not here. Yeah, his jaw's bothering him. Ray's been having a lot of trouble out of his teeth lately, so let's just remember him in prayer as well. Anyone else? Let's remember that young man that we're torn. torn. Uh, I do want to remember him. Let's remember all the homeless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Brother Stanley brought that up this morning in the prayer room. Uh, these folks that are out in the elements of this world, thank God I got a home. I got a place I can lay my head at night uh, and stay out of the weather, but there's not everybody can say that. So let's remember them in prayer. And I know I saw it this week, and thank you, it's Greensboro. It's had these little portable houses up for them, and now they're beginning to take them down because the weather's changing. Uh, people don't only need shelter from the winter weather, but we need shelter sometimes from the summer weather. Yeah. They also so, had a hotel they were staying in. Yeah, and they're getting ready to renovate it. Mm -hmm. So let's just uh, let's just pray for all these folks that are on the street. Amen. I'm just thankful that I've got a home that I can go and lay my head in. Amen. Amen. And not everybody can say that. Anyone else? Maybe just by the lifted hand. All right, we're going to ask Roger to come on. We'll pray for these needs and pray for our offering. I turn to gracious Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for blessing us throughout the day. And thank you for the opportunity once again we have this side of eternity, Lord, to just be in your house, to assemble ourselves together, Lord, that we might worship you. Father, I just pray and ask you now, Lord, to reach down and touch all these needs, Lord. Reach down and touch the sick and afflicted of our church, Father. Put your hand upon them and help them this morning, Father. And Father, there's so many just not with us today. Sister Annette, Father, I pray that you touch her. Put your hand upon her and help her, Lord. Sister Jean, Lord. Brother James and Sister Marie, Lord, just touch them. Brother Jerry, Father, put your hand upon him. And Brother Ray, Lord. Just continue to touch them and help them, Father, and put your hand on them, Lord. And, Father, I just pray and ask you to just uh, reach down and touch the service today, Father. Have your hand upon it. Touch those that are watching, Lord. Touch those who are in uh, attendance today, Father. 
And Father, I just pray for the one that may be watching or the one that may be here that don't know you in the free pardon of sin. Father, I pray that you speak to that heart. Draw that person to you and save them, Lord, before it's eternally everlasting too late. Now, Lord, bless this offering. Take it and use it for the furtherance of thy kingdom, Lord. We pray and ask these things all in the name that's above every name. And that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for his sake, amen. amen. And we have announcements for the church. Don't forget about next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, being our prayer room time. Uh, as long as the weather is permitted, we will go back to our normal times next week. And then our service at 1030. Now, this evening, we would normally have our uh, first service of the month, but pastors decided to set aside our evening service due to the weather and the things that are going on this evening and everything. So we won't be having an evening service this evening, but at some point this evening, pastor may come online and, and give a little scripture and maybe give an update on some of our folks. I'm planning on talking to some of them. So you just be aware that pastor may jump on and uh, you may see me again before the day's out. And I know everybody says amen there. Amen. Amen. Glad to see y'all all want to see your pastor. But uh, as far as I know, the fourth Sunday of this month, we will have another service on that evening and everything. So you just be in much prayer. Also take note that on Wednesday evenings, we are doing this service now at 6 o'clock. Uh, pastor has moved that back due to the fact that my shift is getting ready to change. Uh, we've got a date now. It's the 1st of April. It'll be April the 2nd. We shift back to day Yay! Yay! I should be back on day shift. Amen. So thank you for praying for that as well. Pastor wants to make one other, two other announcements. Uh, now, next Sunday, we will be taking a second offering for our building fund. And Pastor's going to say here again, a quarter, a dime, a nickel, a penny. A dollar, whatever it is that you feel led to put in the building fund, put it in there. Amen. Uh, we got some things that we want to do around here in the building, but we want to build our building fund up. We got some painting we'd like to do. We're looking at maybe replacing the air unit for this particular portion of the church and everything. So you just put every, whatever God leads you to put in there, and I promise you God will bless you. Amen. And then the other announcement that Pastor wants to make, how many of you watch us on Facebook? When we have a service, when you can't be here. Okay. Now, uh, Wednesday evening services will remain on Facebook. If you miss one, uh, you can check anything recent. You can look over at YouTube. Now, Brother Keith has transferred a lot of our services over to YouTube, okay? Now, the first weekend in April, the first Sunday in April, we're going to try to go live just solely on YouTube. We're going to come away from Facebook, okay? And we're going to try to go uh, on to YouTube, okay? I want you to remember that. And it doesn't cost us anything to switch or anything like that, but uh, it would cost us if we want to do multiples. And Brother Keith looked into it, and we have to have a software to do multiples, and the software is kind of expensive. So for the moment, we're going to switch over to YouTube, and all of the services will be live on there. And then, of course, you can go back. Uh, I think Brother Keith's got all the uh, recent stuff up. So any of the uh, series that Pastor's been doing, you can go back on YouTube and catch those. And uh, if you want to know how to get on it, see Miss Melissa afterwards, or see Brother Keith, and he can let you know how to get on to our page on YouTube. And the ones that are watching, tell them to text me or message me, and I've got the picture of the YouTube page, and I can text it to them. Right. And for those of you that didn't hear that, Miss Melissa can text you or send you the picture of the YouTube page, how to get on it. Mm -hmm. uh, she's already taught Miss Janie how to get on it. <laughs> Amen. Keith can put a link up to YouTube on the Facebook page. Yes. And they can get yep, page. he's already, he's got one running and everything. But we're going to try to just be live on YouTube on Sunday morning. And then you can catch our services kind of on both and everything. But we're going to try the live thing on YouTube. Uh, YouTube ain't quite as, how can I put this? Political. Poli uh, thank you. Political. <laughs> That's a nice word, Sister Wendy. So we're going to, we're going to go that route. And uh, Brother Keith's got us on, on the regular web page. And then he told me about another one that's a little bit to the right. Can I say that? Uh, he's got us on another page. So we're being seen. Amen. Uh, the main thing is, is the gospel message is being preached and being gotten out there. Amen. 
that people might hear the gospel and know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and have that opportunity. So just remember that, Pastor. I'll make more, uh, I'll make more announcements regarding that as well as we go along. Is there anything else that needs to claim our attention? All right. Now, uh, Pastor did say he talked about Easter. Uh, we are uh, just a moment. Uh, we are investigating and looking at having an Easter meal, but now we will be having a brunch type thing like I did last year, like we did last year where we had breakfast right after the service and everything. I haven't really put everything in concrete yet. We're still waiting on getting a few uh, other things in place. And hopefully by next Sunday, I'll have a better uh, grasp on this as to what we're going to do. But we'll have a service that morning. Now, we won't have a sunrise service. I just, I just need y'all to say amen right there. Uh, we're not going to have a real, real, real early service. Pastor is going to back the service up a little bit. And then we're going to come together. We're going to have service. Then we'll go downstairs and we'll have brunch together or breakfast or whatever you want to call it. Fellowship for a little while. And then you'll be free for the rest of the day. Spend time with friends and family. Whatever it is that you want to do on Easter. Amen. And everything. But we will be having church. Amen. All right, and I'll have more about that next week. I think Miss Melissa's going to sing for us, so I'm going to ask her to come on, and then we'll have the message from God's Word. I didn't know I was going to get that information about Miss Marcia this morning. And I told Miss Ann and Miss Janie I didn't know what I was going to sing this morning until I got to church. And God put this song on my heart. It's called You Are Busy. Yes. 
Is that how I say her name? Aon. He always has to help me with that. She's got one on the 20th. Uh, Mr. Babson back there has got one on the 21st. Yeah. And then uh, Nancy, Miss Nancy's got one on the 31st. All right. Amen. <laughs> Uh, pastor was 25 this past week. Uh, uh, Lord, no, 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 wait a minute. You're going to have to get on that altar. I've already asked the Lord to forgive me, so all is good. Listen, my mentor always said he was holding at 29. I'm holding at 25. Amen. So, uh, Amen. 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 So, uh, all right. Let's get started here, or we'll be here to noon or after. I'm pretty sure we're going to be here to noon anyway. <laughs> all right. So, y'all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God. March anniversaries. So at this time, we'll let Miss Wendy and Miss Gracie go next door. You can turn to the book of Luke this morning, Luke chapter 8, same place we've been the last couple of weeks. We're going to continue our uh, our studies there. We're going to continue uh, there in speaking on his hand. Amen. Get the mic on here. There we are. And uh, y'all pray for Pastor. I keep losing this little cloth thing that's on the top of it here, and Crystal and Roger keep finding it. Uh, so uh, it, it flies. That's all I can say. Wow. So uh, just uh, y'all just pray for him and pray for me, and pray one for another. Amen. But the last uh, the last two weeks, uh, this is the uh, third. Uh, message to be brought out of Luke 8. Uh, the first one, uh, we talk, we've been talking about in his hands. These things are in his hands. Miss Melissa a while ago said that we're sung about being in his presence. Aren't you glad we're in his presence yes, today? Amen. Amen. Not only are we in his presence today, but we're always in his presence. No matter what's going on in your life, God is always there. Amen. And I'm thankful to know that he is. Uh, we look back in this chapter and just a little bit of a recap here. Uh, in the first week, we, these are four challenges to faith, and our Lord meets each and every one of these challenges. The first week, there was a dang, set of dangerous circumstances. Many of us know that he got in a boat, and he got the disciples in the boat with him. And he told them, guys, we're going to the other side. How I many of you know they made it to the other side? Amen. Uh, honey, I got something to tell you. God has promised that we're going to make it to the other side. Amen. But I want to say something right here, and it's come to my attention this week in talking to people that some people believe that Christians are immune to sickness. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this. You're not immune to sickness, and neither am I. We get sick. Uh, and sometimes, uh, now there is a, sometimes sickness is brought on because we bring it on ourselves. You can say amen. 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 Uh, I brought things on myself. Uh, we shouldn't mess around out in weather like this and do things out in weather like this. Uh, Pastor used himself as an example. I moved my grass for the first time this week uh, and everything. And uh, I know that don't mean much to y'all, but it means a lot to me because I love my lawnmower. Uh, and, but this week I did mow my yard for the first time, changed the oil, and while I was changing the oil in the lawnmower, everything was fine. I uh, jumped on the lawnmower and took off, and it was Tuesday. How many of you know it was kind of windy? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't long before pastors stopped the lawnmower, left it running, running the house. Miss Melissa said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting my sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a little older now, the blood don't move like it used to, and it was a little cool. Uh, so I threw my sweatshirt on, put my hat on my head, and back out the door I went. And uh, it felt much better, Brother Keith, even though I was in the sun, that wind was kind of cold. Yeah. Uh, but listen, uh, it wouldn't have made much sense to stay out there 
Pastor probably would have been a little under the weather. Did wake up uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon with a little bit of a stopped up nose, and sinus pressure and things of that nature, but all of that's gone now and everything. But sometimes we bring sickness on ourselves because we make, we make foolish decisions sometimes. We do things that we are not do. But let me say something to you. You're not immune to sickness and you're not immune to circumstances. And let me go a step further. These Sometimes these things come into our life because it's our appointed lot. These things are going to happen. I can't tell you that you're never going to be sick again. I can, and listen, it doesn't, doesn't always mean that you've done something to make God mad. Right. Or that you have a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, your faith can be weak. But sometimes sickness just comes along. Amen. Mm -hmm. And circumstances come along. These things happen. Man's not immune. Listen, we're still under the curse even though we're saved. Amen. Yeah. Listen, we've been delivered from the curse. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Honey, I've been delivered from death through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got eternal life. And not only did he say I've come that they might have life, but I've come that they might have abundant life. Honey, I've got good life. Amen. Amen. And listen, whether I'm sick or whether I'm down, whether I fall and break my leg, it don't make any difference, honey. Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. And God is still good. What? All the time. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm just being honest with you today. We're not immune and you don't have a lack of faith. And I want to go a step further too. Satan can tear you up and he'll get in your life and tear things down, honey. But he can't take over because you belong to God. Amen. Yeah. If the blood's a bit implied, you go life. And I'm going to repeat what I said last week. A person who is saved today and has a deposit of the Holy Spirit, under no circumstances does God render that person back into the hands of Satan. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you can't be demon-possessed. Satan can tear your world up. He can disturb you and tear things down that God's trying to build up in your life. But honey, he can't take your life. Amen. Amen. And he can't do what he wants no more because you don't belong to that life no more. You don't belong in his camp no more. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been delivered out, honey, by the blood of Christ. Amen. And honey, for him to get to you, he's going to have to walk through the blood. And baby, if he walks through the blood, he's going to get saved. And ain't no hope for him. Amen. Amen. It ain't no happen. Message number one, thank you. <laughs> now, I'm just here to tell you today, don't you get led astray. Now, Satan will cause you all kinds of problems. He will. He'll come in. He'll get up on your shoulder, and he'll whisper in your ear. But how many of you know we read last week? We read, honey, what happened to the madman of Gadaria? When Jesus showed up, them demons did what? Woo! They had to go. Amen. They can't coexist. It don't happen. And I'll tell you, I'm just I just tell you I'm about sick and tired of this philosophy. Honey, I got something to tell you. If you belong to God today, there's no way Satan can take you back. I'm being honest. If you give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan can cause you some problems, but he can't possess you anymore. I know there's people mad at me now, but that's all right. Let them stay mad. They get mad at me and stay mad at me, and then turn me off and do whatever. But, honey, you will tell you this much, you won't turn God off. No. Yeah. How many of you know there's sickness in this world? Mm -hmm. Amen. I want you to see a lady that had some sickness. Now, Jesus is coming back from the land of the Gadareans. Mm -hmm. Honey, he done met two challenges, amen. Our Lord meets challenges and he puts them down, amen. Mm -hmm. Two challenges to faith. Number one was the dangerous circumstances. Last week was Satan and sin. How I many of you know he put Satan and sin down, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, man, it ruined a lot of barbecue in the process. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. listen to what I'm saying to you. God met the challenge and Jesus can meet the challenge. You can't meet the challenge without him, but with him. With him I can do all things. 
I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. What gives me the strength to go on? What gives you the strength to go on is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And honey, I got something to tell you. He's stronger than the devil. Yeah, amen. Much. He's already, honey, I don't know how to tell you this, but Satan's defeated. He's a defeated foe. And if he's your foe today, and he is, and he's your adversary, but he's defeated. Yeah, he is. Honey, I got something to tell you. Uh, judgment's done been passed on him. Amen. All we're waiting for is the sentence to be carried out. Yeah. Amen. Well, y'all get quiet on me. Amen. But honey, I want to look at sickness this morning. And listen, we've all, we've all at certain times, we've been sick with different things, different things going on. I'll tell y'all something. It, it just occurred to me. Y'all don't think God made good. Look at Curtis this morning. He done took the eye patch off. Yeah. Hey. 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 hey! Amen! Amen! If you don't think that ain't good, Curtis is happy. Guess who drove this morning, Curtis? Curtis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? Because God done touched him. Amen? Amen. God's helping him. Along with Paul. <laughs> Don't poke him no more, Paul. No matter what he says, he needs his eyes. That's debatable. I, I'll counsel with y'all later on. <laughs> and then I'll offer up a good counselor. Amen? But let's look. Let's get into the word this morning. Look at verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned... The people gladly received him. Don't you like that? We talked about receiving him last mm -hmm. week. Uh, we see two differences here. Uh, the ones we talked to the Gadareans, they didn't want nothing to do with him. They didn't want to receive him. They run him off. Amen? Let me if you know you can run God off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You run you. Hey, the Bible says we can quench the spirit. Amen? You've got to be careful. Amen? You can hurt him. Why? Because he's a person. Yeah. That's, all I, that's message too. Amen. Gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. I like that, don't you? That's something you ought to underline in your Bible and pay attention to there. Verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. I want you to remember this man. We're going to talk a little bit about him today, a little bit more about him next week. He was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he besought him that he would come into his house. And you notice that. Here's this man. He's come, and he's fell down at Jesus' feet. He's got, he's got something on his heart. Amen. He does. He's got something. He, listen, he's grieving, and not for himself. Look at verse 42. But he had, only, he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age. I want you to take note of how old this girl is. She's 12 years old. And she lay dying. Mm -hmm. So now what's Jairus doing? He's coming to the Lord because she's dying. Amen. But as he went, the people thronged him. So many people around Christ at this time. That's what it means to throng him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. Pay attention now which had spent all her living upon positions, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. Jesus said, who touched me? And all denied Peter. And they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed. Immediately. Look at verse 48. And he said unto her, I want you to pay attention here as well. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. Let's pray. Our 
eternal gracious heavenly father we thank you lord we thank you for this day thank you father for this time that we have to come together lord that we might worship you in spirit and in truth today father we just give you honor and praise and glory above all other things lord we want to just say today, Lord, that we love you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for those who have gathered here today. Thank you for those who are watching today, Father. Thank you for those, Lord, that, that can't be with us today for some sickness, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to just touch them and put your hand upon them and help them, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray and ask you to reach down and touch that one today, Lord, that sin sick. Sin sick and lost without you today, Father. They've never repented of their sins. They've never received you as their Lord and Savior. They're still on a dangerous road, Lord. They're on their way to a devil's hell, Lord. But, Lord, we know that's not what you want or what you desire. So, Lord, I pray for them today. I pray that you speak to those hearts, Lord. Draw those people to you and save them, Father, before it's eternally or lasting too late. Now, Father, I just pray and ask you to go with us throughout this day, Father. Have your hand upon it and bless and touch it like only you can. These things we pray and that's all in the name that's above every name. And that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for his sake, amen. amen. You know, we begin to look at these verses. And as I said, this is the third point. And here we see sickness. We see two Sickness is here. We see one man coming to Christ for his daughter. And his name's Jairus, and a little background on him. He's the leader of the Jewish people in this area. He's the leader of the Sanhedrin. Uh, many of you, if you don't know what that is, that's the religious group of the Jews. He's the leader, more or less, of the temple, if you will. And he, but do we notice who he comes to? Now, no doubt Jesus' reputation has gone abroad by now because he's done miracles, he's done things. And no doubt maybe this man's been in the crowd somewhere else and he's seen these miracles done and he's seen other people healed. So he's coming to Jesus, amen? How many of you know that people come to the Lord out of all walks of life? Amen. amen. Uh, God's no discriminator. Uh, but this man, he's a he's a wealthy man, no doubt. Uh, and he's coming. And we even have his name. But then we have an anonymous lady. Uh, the Bible doesn't call her by name. But she's anonymous. She's just coming. And the Bible says some things about her. And we're going to look at her today in depth. A little bit more at her. And then next week we'll finish up by looking at Jairus a little more. But the thing I want you to notice is... That this is two different walks of life. That these walks of life are still in God's hands. Amen. They truly are. And when we look at these verses, and we see, and we see these verses that in God here, we look in, and we see in verse uh, number. Uh, I gotta find my place. Then lost my place now. Uh, we go back up to uh, verse forty. Might help if I turn the page back. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, now he's come back. He's come back from the land of the Gadarenes. They've come back across the sea. And now he's returned. And now we see the people gladly, they gladly what? They gladly received him. Now we talked about a group of people last week that didn't want anything to do with him. Even though uh, Jesus has uh, saved this man, uh, he's, he's run these devils out of this man who no doubt not only tormented himself, but he tormented the community. Uh, Jesus has done something wonderful for this man, and the people don't want to receive him. Uh, I've seen people get saved, and people not want to receive them. Uh, let me say something to you. When God saves somebody, we ought to be happy. Amen. We ought to be a happy people and willing to receive. that. Uh, people received us, didn't they? Aren't you glad for the people that took you in after you got saved? Yeah. Uh, you realized that there was a better way. Amen. You realized because somebody discipled you and took you under their wing. I'm thankful for the people, Brother Keith, in my life. I'm thankful for the ministers that have been in my life, the men that I've known that preach the Word of God, uh, one in particular, and uh, many of you have met him. 
And uh, I thank the world for him. I was in his home on Monday and spent four hours with him. Uh, I love Brother Bob. And Brother Bob's been good to me and my wife. And his wife's been a great teacher to my wife uh, and everything. And God has used these two people in our lives uh, mightily. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. And he tell me right now, Jeff, you be quiet. And I'm not giving uh, Brother Bob the praise, but I'm giving the God that me and him both serve uh, the praise. Amen. Uh, and, but I'm being honest. They received Christ. Uh, how many of you know the Gadarenes? They run him off. They're like, get on out of here. Get back in that boat. We don't want nothing to do with it. Wasn't happy that God had saved this man. He took this man who was running through the tombs, cutting on himself. In fact, if you go back to the book of Matthew, you'll find out there was two of them. And he done what? He saved them. And listen, they were unclothed. They were running naked through the tombs. You said, Pastor, you say the word naked? No, naked. That's what my little granddaughter says. She says, naked. Uh, she'll say, Daddy, you naked. Uh, talking about you ain't got a shirt on. Uh, but you listen to what I'm saying to you. They run through the tombs. And they cut on themselves and done all kinds of crazy things. And they was bound sometimes in chains. And they broke those chains. Uh, how many of you know Jesus run that devil off? Amen. Yeah. And he saved this man. So these people ought to have been happy. Because not only did he save this man, but I believe it changed the community. Yes. Amen. It changed things for them. But no, they was un upset uh, and, and they run him off. But here we see these people receiving the Lord. Amen. And he comes back and he's received. And I like what it says in the next part of that. They're waiting for him. You need to pay attention to that. How many of you know God don't do things instantly? And I know people hate this part. And I ain't saying that I don't. That I don't. I, I like grits. I like instant grits. Uh, but God don't always work that fast. Uh, I don't always like a drive-through. But everything now you go through the drive-through and get it. You can pick up your groceries now uh, via remote. I know many of you do that. My sister does that. There's, there's, and if you enjoy that, that's that's good. But how many of you know that God don't work that way? And we don't like that. Uh, we don't like to wait. But these people were waiting on the Lord. They were in anticipation. Honey, I got something to tell you. That we have to learn to wait on Him. Because he, He's not going to... And listen, you can throw all the fits and I can too. Listen, I stand on my head till all the blood runs in, out of my head. And God, He's not going to answer that prayer no quicker. No. He's going to do it when it's right. Amen. And when he knows things is lined up and he knows it's right, we sometimes we have to wait. These people are waiting. I see them being antsy, don't you? When's he coming back? The people out there look at Brother Keith. Is he coming? And they say he's coming. Well, he ain't getting here quick enough. You ever been there? You're not doing it quick enough, Lord. These things, that's right, Brother, yesterday ain't quick enough. You know what's wrong with American people? We're spoiled. Yeah. Y'all get mad at me, but we're spoiled. We are. We're a spoiled nation. Because now everything's instant. Mm -hmm. So we think God ought to be instant. God don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's why we've taken him out of everything. Paula, that's a good that's a good analogy there. We've taken him out of everything because God don't instantly always do things. Let me tell you something. God does them when he knows it's right and it's going to work out right. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. amen. God won't God never work anything in your life that ain't working for your good. Yeah, not. He tells us that in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. Know me. Now all things work to the good, but them that love God. How many of you love him this morning? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love him. I love him. Amen. I love him because he first loved me. Amen. He loves me now when I'm unlovable. Amen. How many of you know Christians can be unlovable? Mm -hmm. I met a few. But you listen. I'm glad God loves us in spite of who we are. Amen. And not only that, but He's working everything for our good. I mean, you know, you've been called according to His purpose. Amen. God's got a purpose for your life. Amen. Yes. He's got a purpose for my life. There's things that God wants to use us for and use us mightily. And He uses us in the ministry at different points, different things that He wants us to do. Honey, I got something to tell you. 
God sent Brother Keith here to be my media guy. Mm-hmm. And I love him. Yeah. Amen. And he loves his pastor. Amen. And he mm-hmm. loves the Lord. That's what I like. Yeah. And I'm just using Brother Keith as an instance. Because Brother Keith, uh, can I tell this on you, brother? Mama guilted him. <laughs> All of you know Miss Annette's his mom. Amen. Thank God for mamas. Yeah. She guilted him. She guilted him in coming. He really didn't want to come. Then after he came, he got the lie. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, then I found out that he was knowledgeable and savvy. Mm-hmm. And he got us his camera. Didn't cost the church anything. And he takes care of our media. Amen. Mm-hmm. And he does a good job. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, don't tell me God can't use you. Amen. Because he can. And then uh, uh, them two people sitting over there, they take care of our son. I mean, you know, Roger's our security guy. Yeah. yeah He's a good security man. Uh, James has already tried to give to the women to calm down. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to leave that alone. But you listen. Yes, dear. Uh, you listen to what I'm saying. You God will use you mightily. And there's people in this church that God uses in this church. Amen. I thank God for all of you because I know you pray. Amen. You pray for our services. You pray one for another. Uh, it never fails. Every time I talk to Brother James, Brother James says, Pastor, me and Marie, every day we pray for the whole church. Mm-hmm. And I got something to tell you. I'm thankful for prayer warriors. Amen. Yes. I'm thankful for Brother James and the things that he still does, even at his age. Amen. And I love him. Amen. And I love you. I'm thankful that you come. And listen, sometimes I just need people to preach to. Amen. And I'm thankful Amen. for you. Amen. But you listen to what I'm saying to you. How many of you know now? Here's to people from different walks of life. And the things that God can do. Uh, but let me say something to you. Say this at the onset, of the, well, the onset of, uh, of the service. And that's this. That me and you are not immune from sickness. No. Sickness comes along. Amen. Now here's a man who's the leader of the Sanhedrin. He's a wealthy man. And no doubt he's a religious man. But he, and listen. His family is being touched by sickness. He's got a 12-year-old daughter who's laying and dying. Uh-huh. Look what the Bible says. And behold, in verse 41, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying but as he went, the people thronged him. Listen, he's, she's 12 years old, and her daddy has come. Now listen, he may be a man who walks close to God. I don't know. The Bible don't tell us. But he was a religious man, and he knows the scriptures, and he's a wealthy man. But sickness has still come to his door. Yes. Amen? It has. Listen, you can walk as close as you want to to God, and I can too. But God never promised us a rose garden. He didn't say that things weren't going to happen to us. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you know, this flesh is weak. Yeah. The Bible says the flesh is weak, but the spirit's willing. Amen. He will quicken your body with his spirit. But he didn't say that we wouldn't get sick. Now, Brother Roger, he's had the code. Brother Keith's had the code. But thank God they're still here. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. Yeah. And God healed them. Amen. And I don't believe either one of those men was sick because of their lack of faith or their lack of love of God or the way that they walk with God. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. This is one of them things that come along and we pray for them. And how many of you know that God healed them? Yes. He's one of, one of five, I think, on his street that got sick. And I think the other four died. He's on one left leg. Praise God. Praise God. But he's still God's man. Yes, amen. Can we see the hand of God? Yeah. Roger's still breathing today. We can see the hand of God. Amen. You've been healed through things. Amen. In Mark chapter 8, in verse 34, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto unto them, Whosoever will come after me and let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ receives people when you receive him. Amen. you got to open the door. But it's a whosoever will. It don't make any difference to God what your bank account looks like. 
He'll save you today if you'll let him. Amen. Amen. But that doesn't mean that sickness can't come to your door. And that doesn't mean that you have a lack of faith in God. No. These things sometimes just happen. Sometimes, how many of you know that God's a whole lot sweeter down in the valley than he is up on the mountaintop? Yeah. And how many of you know down here in the valley is where we learn? Yeah. And sometimes sickness comes along and we get down in the valley. No. Things come along. Life. This is life, amen. And how many of you know life's fragile? Yeah. Amen. Life's an uncertainty, but death is a certainty. It pays to be ready to meet God. Amen. Amen. But down here in the valley, Sister Paula, I have found that God is so sweet. Down here, sometimes when I've gotten down and out and God puts his arm around me and he helps me and he picks me up. And, he, and sometimes, how many of you know he totes you sometimes during these things? And he'll do these things for you and he'll help you. During this time. Why? Because you've received him as your Lord and Savior. Nowhere in the Bible do I see that he says that when we receive him and we receive salvation, that we won't be that we things won't happen to us. And I've had people say, Well, the Bible says in Isaiah, by his stripes we are healed. Honey, he ain't talking about your physical body. He's talking about being healed from the sin sickness. Amen. 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 By his stripes, it's by his blood. He saved us. Amen. Amen. We're saved today by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And honey, God didn't save his flesh. He saved your inner being. He saved your soul. And that's what God's concerned about. Amen. Honey, I ain't taking his flesh to heaven. This flesh is going to drop. Who wants to take this thing that's falling apart and decaying with them? I don't. I don't want to wear these things no more. Amen. But I better put them on now. <laughs> and it ain't a lack of faith that my eyes are, it ain't good. I have to have eyeglasses. I've wore them all my life. Thank God for the eye doctor. Thank God for the knowledge that God gives to doctors to help us when we do get sick. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. Doctors sometimes, they don't always know, do they? No. Not right. That's why they practice. Mm -hmm. Every one of them's got a practice. You ever notice that? Mm -hmm. You're going to a practice. Ain't that what they call them? Yeah. You know what they're doing? They're practicing on you. Amen. Yeah. And on me. Amen. You say, well, I feel worse taking the medication. Well, the practice has gone bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You only get good when you practice. Mm. Y'all get that after a while. But you listen. He didn't ever say that he would that we wouldn't be sick, but he receives us, and it's a whosoever will, let him come. God's not and listen, and I'm not saying God's not interested in your flesh and that he wants you to be sick. But honey, I got something to tell you. God's interested in the soul today of a man. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that soul is what's gonna live on. And honey, I got something to tell you, it's gonna live in one or two places. It's either going to live in heaven with him or it's going to be in the devil's hell. Mm -hmm. To be resurrected out of that hell, to be judged and then to be cast in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. That's scripture. So what is God more concerned about? God's more concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. He don't want you to be sick. God don't intend for people to get sick. But how many of you know that it's part of the curse? The curse was passed on to us not by God, but by Adam. And why has man got a curse on him? Because he disobeys God. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. All of us. I was told by a minister who had been preaching a message all his life that Christians don't get sick. And then suddenly he come down with cancer. And he called all those ministers and all those pastors that he preached that message and he apologized to the people. And he says, I was wrong. Amen. I was wrong. I was the error of my ways. Honey, I got something to tell you. We can get sick. Yeah. Sickness comes. But it's in his hands. <clears throat> Amen. And you're in his hands. And it's by his stripes we are healed. And I've been healed of the sin sickness. Amen. 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 Honey, I got something to tell you. I've been, been delivered from the power of sin. Amen. Those chains have been broken. Amen. Amen. 
been delivered from the influence of sin the, and how it has that power over us. And one day, we're going to be delivered from the very presence of sin. Amen? There ain't going to be no sin in heaven. That's why this body ain't going. I mean, Amen. you know, this thing's sinful. Amen. Amen. i got to get on with the message. That's another message in itself, Brother Curtis. Amen. This flesh is sinful. It's got an appetite. And you feed it. it mm -hmm, it'll keep coming. Yeah, it will. You're not to surrender your body uh, to those things that you once surrendered it to. The Bible teaches us that out of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6 and 7. Go in there and look. Don't take my word for it. Look. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're not to render yourself to unrighteousness anymore. Uh-oh. Yeah. That ain't popular. Because how many of you know we live in an unrighteous world? Yeah, we mm -hmm. do. Oh my goodness. Mm. But listen, it's a whosoever will. Let him come. And God, and God is what? This is sickness, and I want us to see that for what it is. Now Jairus has come and he's fell down at his feet. And he's besought him because his daughter lay dying. And she's 12 years old. But while he's going, the people get all up around him. Uh, listen, I have a picture. It's like this. He's having to fight his way through. And his disciples are pushing people back so he can get through. And Jairus is trying to get him over to his house. So many people wanting this from him to be healed and to be helped. Honey, if they don't want to come to him today. Right, right, the way right. they come to him in those days. But you listen. And then there's this woman. There's this woman. Oh my goodness. Look at verse 43. And this is what I want you to see. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. You notice anything about this? As long as Jairus' little girl has been alive. She's 12 years old. As long as she's been alive, this woman's had a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the little girl's 12 years old. And 12 years prior, when she's being born, this woman's diagnosed with an issue of blood. Now, the Bible don't say what that issue of blood is. This woman has suffered for 12 years. As long as Jairus' little girl's been alive, this woman's been sick. Yeah. I mean, you know, people have been sick a long time. Amen. Amen. Uh, but don't you notice something? Don't you notice something? The woman had an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any. Let me say something to you. Doctors don't know everything. No, no. But I know the one that does. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And let me say something else to you right here. How I many of you have had people that you know that needed healing? Maybe know somebody, excuse me, even now, that needs a healing. I mean, you know, it has to be according to God's will. Amen. 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 And there's people out here that say, well, it's God's will that they not get sick. I've heard that, haven't you? It's, it, it's their fault. It's their lack of faith. How <laughs> I many of you believe that Brother Jerry's got leukemia, uh, not leukemia, but uh, yes. bone cancer today because of his lack of faith? No. People that you know that's been sick with these kinds of things. How many of you think it's a lack of faith? I, I want to use something a little bit closer. Miss Vivian, she's in shape. She's in shape today because of her lack of faith. No. 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 These things just happen because we're under the curse. And these things are that way. Curtis, I didn't mean to give you a bath. But you listen to what I'm saying to you. You listen to what I'm saying to you. It's not always a lack of faith, but doctors don't know everything. And honey, I want to tell you something. A good preacher friend of mine said this week, he said, uh, who is sick? And he said that a man said to him, he said, well, you're dying. He said, we're all dying of something. Amen? He said, we're all dying of something. And we are. How many of you know? Uh, honey, I don't know. Jerry might outlive us all. Yeah. Miss Vivian, she might outlive us all too. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. might step outside in the bus <laughs> and you out of here. Amen. Only God knows how you're going out. Yeah. And by what design? 
But honey, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep trusting him until I'm gone. Yes, amen. 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 And if I get sick, I get sick. Amen. Don't you weep over me. You just pray. Amen. You pray God will heal your pastor. Amen. And I can get up and run and shout and preach again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everything that we do ought to be for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Y'all remember what he said about Lazarus? He said this death is for the glory of God. Amen. Yeah. Honey, I don't know, but I got something I want to tell you. Brother Jerry's been talking to people. Amen. When he goes and takes his treatment, hey, he might lead somebody to God. Why? Because he's got that bone cancer. And listen, you know what that will mean? That will mean that cancer's there for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Because he wanted him to lead somebody. That he wouldn't normally meet. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that stick? Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. This woman's been sick for 12 years. And she's been to every physician. And she's spent all she's had, the Bible says. But now, honey, she's coming to the one that can. Amen? When doctors take the Lord, Jesus can. Amen? Amen. And I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor and not to trust the doctor. You pray about what doctor to go to. That's right. I've seen a lot of praying doctors. Amen. Amen. And sometimes that's how God wants it to be. But listen, there's no age has no bearing, no partiality with God. There's no partiality being showed here. Here's a little girl been alive for twelve years. A woman for that twelve years, she's sick. Two ranges of difference in age. Wouldn't you agree? There's no partiality. The Bible says that he reigns on the just and the unjust equally. He's no respecter of persons. In the book of Peter, uh, in the book of Acts, Peter tells the people that. He said God is not a respecter of persons. Old people, young people, middle-aged people, they all die. Not only that, age has no bearings. When That's he right. saves somebody, That's right. he'll save a 90 year old just like he will a five year old. Yeah, he will. Woo, yes. Yeah. Amen. I'm being honest. You know what God's looking for today? He's looking for a repentant heart. Amen. Amen. A change. Honey, he's looking for you to turn around and start going the way God wants you to go. You know what he's looking for from the sinner today? He wants you to open that door and let him come in and say, Lord, forgive me and take over my life. Amen. And run it for me because I can't do nothing with it no more. Amen. That's what he wants. Surrender. He's looking for surrender from his people. I mean, if you know you can be saved and not surrendered. Mm -hmm. Well, God, I think I can handle this today by myself. I think I can handle this sickness by myself, Lord. Go ahead and try. Best thing we can do is say, Lord, the doctor says, I ain't got much longer to live. Lord, would you help me? Would you help me, Lord? And honey, I got something to tell you. If you don't heal you here, he'll heal you there. Yes. Amen. I had a man to point out to me, you know what happens to cancer when you die? Your soul goes there, and that cancer stays with the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get a hold of that one, honey. Yeah. So what's that tell you about God? God takes the soul. He takes the spirit. But again, he leaves that cancer in that old flesh behind. Mm -hmm. You know where that cancer is in your loved one that died? It's in that body. It ends right there. That strand ends right there, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. if, your, if your loved one died of COVID, that COVID strand ends right there with them. Yes. They can't infect you no more. They're not infected anymore either, Paul. They ain't gone on home to be with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it ain't a lack of faith. If it's a lack of faith, honey, why are they walking the streets today? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. They just got sick. Yeah. It's just one of them things that happens. But I tell you, the best faith and the best trust you can do is trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah. And then, honey, no matter what comes, I'm going to walk the streets of glory. Yeah, glory, glory. All because of what he did for me at Calvary. Yes. Amen. My roots ain't so deep here that I don't want to go home. Is yours? Ain't nothing here. Don't you plant your roots here. Don't you plant your anchor here. 
Honey, my name, your hose, and his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 And I want to live as long as God will let me live and do the things that God wants me to do. But honey, I got something to tell you. When he when he trumpet sounds, if I'm living when the rapture happens, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. If I get sick and something happens to me, don't you worry about me. Jesus is coming to get me. Yeah, amen. My bridge's legs and all. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> If the rapture takes place and I'm preaching, I'm out of here. If you stay, y'all find me a new one. You're going to need him. You're going to need him because I'm going home. If you want to stay here, you stay, honey. But, honey, I'm going home. I don't want to be here with the end of Christ. But age has no bearing on God. Amen. Here's a woman been sick for 12 years and a little girl who's died at the age of 12 years old. And age has no bearing. Amen. But here's a woman, and I want you to look at her faith. Look at her faith. She said, I've spent it all. But if I could just reach out. She didn't say, let me get the preacher so-and-so. She didn't say, let me go to doctor so-and-so no more. She said, but if I could just reach out and take a hold of the hill of his garment, I'll be healed. Hey. Hey. Woo! Aren't you glad for the day that you took a hold of the hill of the garment? She reaches around these people. She reached around them because she had faith in Jesus, not only to heal her, but she knew he could save her. Yeah. Amen. I'm being honest. He's not a respecter of persons. If you'll come to him, he'll help you today. Even when you're sick, come in, you know God can help you. Yeah. And this sickness is no challenge for our Lord. And look what he said. Look what she said. Whoo! Pastor's wearing himself out. Look at verse 44. Came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Look, Curtis, she just reaches out. She comes behind him. She's kind of weaving her way through the crowd. I, I picture a little woman like Paul. <laughs> You know, she can weave her way through. Amen. Go with her to Walmart and watch her. Yeah. <laughs> and what she can't get through, that can't. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Amen. But I picture this little woman weaving her way through. You know what she's doing? She ain't trying to get to nobody but Christ. Yes. She's trying to get to the Lord. Why? Because she knows. Now the doctors are at their wits end. They've told her there's nothing else we can do. Now, how many of you know doctors can do? Yeah. They can. They can help you. But, honey, when they come to the end of the road and they don't have no more answers, things is much better if you've been seeking the advice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what she's doing now. She's weaving her way. She heard Jesus was coming. And no doubt she was standing on them shores. Yeah. Oh, how many of you know he jumped on her shoulder? Sure did. Like he did the man that got a rib. He saved that man from sin, running them devils out and threw them out. Now he's going to help this woman. Amen. Didn't even speak to her to begin with. She's been sick. I believe she's been a faithful woman all these years. She did. Don't you? Mm -hmm. But how many of you know she's probably had moments of weakness? Oh. Yeah. We all do. Anybody says they ain't got a moment of weakness in their faith, there's something wrong with them. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. But she makes her way through this crowd. She says, pardon me, excuse me, would you get out of my way? Amen. Reaches out from behind him. <laughs> Even behind, being behind the Lord, he knew she was coming. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? He's Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the son of the living God. He don't even have to have eyes in the back of his head. He knew what she was getting ready to do. And she reaches out and she takes a hold of his garment. She took a hold of the border of his garment. Think about it. She reaches out and then after she reaches out, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say after she reaches out? 
immediately her issue of blood starts. It means it stopped instantaneously. Whatever was wrong with her, I think she realized, oh God, oh God, I feel different. Remember after you got saved, didn't you feel different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When God touches you and you touch Him, there's a difference made in your life. Right. For whatever reason, you're touching Him or He's touching you. Amen. Amen. But she reaches out and she takes a hold of the border of His garment. And the Bible says immediately, immediately, it stopped. And then she starts to fade back. Back up, back up. I don't want Him to see me. I mean, if you know, He knows she's there. Yeah, Amen. He does. I don't, I don't want him to see him. All I need to do, I don't even need to talk to him. All I need to do was take a hold of his garment. Just to be able to be in his presence. And say, honey, I got something to tell you. There's peace in his presence. Today. Amen. 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 There's peace in his presence. Even when you're sick, there's a peace that comes over you in the presence of God. In the presence of our Lord. And this woman, she reaches out and she takes a hold of the border of his garment. And her problem stopped. Ain't that wonderful? Yeah, amen. We see that in this church already. We prayed for Brother Curtis and his eye problems getting better. Amen. The eye amen. 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 I don't know about y'all, but it excites me when Brother Jerry walks into the building. Amen. Yeah, amen. You know why? Yeah, he's still got a problem, but here comes God. Amen. Here comes God. Here comes the grace of God and the power of God and the strength of God and the healing of God. Amen. You know why? Because he's touched Brother Jerry just enough for that day for him to come and be in church. Amen. Amen. If you think you're excited about it, your pastor's excited about it, you talk to him. Amen. 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 Brother Jerry says when God touches his pain, he said it's good. Yeah. But I tell you what. I believe Jerry still got faith in God. Amen. Yes, Amen. He told me, he said, Pastor, if something happens to me, he said, I'll be healed back. Amen. Yeah. He said, my wife died of cancer. But he said, she ain't got cancer no more. He said, she's there. I said, Brother, she that cancer's here, and she's there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's being honest. That's being truthful. But here she touches the hem of his garment. And look, look, this is faith in Jesus. Faith not only to heal, but to faith to be saved. Amen? It's faith. Trust in Him. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's coming, I'm going to trust you, Lord. Yeah. It's all going to work out for your honor and your glory. If I'm sick, Lord, this is for your honor and for your glory. Yeah, yeah. It's honesty. It's truthful. Lord, no matter what's happening in my life, I'm broke today, Lord, for your honor and your glory. Amen? If the lights get cut off today, Lord, you'll get them back on, and it'll be for your honor and your glory. Amen? You know why? Because God's got a story he wants us to tell. Yeah. Amen? And honey, he saved me for his honor and his glory. Yes, yes. Amen. He saved you for his honor and for his glory. And our life is to bring honor and glory to him. And sometimes things befall us for his honor and for his glory. That's yeah. truthful. I got a preacher friend who fell 15 feet and it broke him up. Mm -hmm. Broke his pelvis all the way across. Broke and bruised his tailbone and cracked several of his ribs. And Brother John was laying in the hospital. And here's the kicker. He had to wait three days before they could operate on him because he's got a mechanical valve in his heart and they had to let his blood thicken up. How'd you like to lay there three days and feel your hip wound? Now, y'all know he was in pain. How many of you know I visited him? Yeah. It's always good to kick a man when he's down. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. I love him. He's a good pastor friend of mine. And I visited him. And I said, Brother John, you didn't do what God told you. He said, here it comes. All you preachers are just alike. I said, you forgot what he said. I said, you're 15 foot in the air. He said, yeah. I said, the Bible says, lo, I am with you always. Amen. He said, he didn't say anything about being high. He said, you rascals. He said, but just for that, you take over my church services until I'm well. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I did. I helped him out. But I got something to tell you. Brother John told me over there, I'll never forget. 
He said, God's been with me through this whole thing. He said, I failed. And he said, there was a truck. He said, people, he said, he had to crawl his way up to the road, man. And you imagine crawling and your pelvis broke. He crawled all the way up to the edge of the road trying to wave people down. And nobody would stop. But there was a truck driver who turned down that road who was late and was making the delivery. And he said that truck driver told him, he said, something told me to turn. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what that something was, don't you? Uh -huh. God. Yeah, and and he said, something told me to look over. And he said, I looked over and he said, I stopped. I mean, you know that John witnessed to that man. Yeah. Even in the shape he was in. See, that fall was for God's honor and his glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he witnessed to several people in the hospital. And let me share this with you. He told me, he said, Brother Jeff, there's a couple of people that's gotten saved because of it. God's honor and his glory. Yeah, he did. Yeah. You never know how God's going to use you or what's going to happen that God might use you. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful with you. This woman had faith in him. Amen. And I want to say something to you. In the book of James, chapter 5, if people are not supposed to get sick, in the book of James, chapter 5, and I'm trying to hurry on, what does the Bible say? He says, is any sick among you? You hear what he said? Is there any sick among you? Everybody, and listen, we got folks sick today. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen to the prescription God gives. He said, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now listen, you can't pray and ask for other people's sins to be forgiven. But you know what God's saying here? He's saying we need to anoint people who are sick and pray over them. Mm -hmm. And if there's something they've done, they can ask God for that forgiveness. And God will forget them. Amen? Amen? And he will. And he'll heal the sick. Listen, he gives a prescription for the healing of the sick. We're to anoint. We've done that in this church. Yeah. We've prayed as a church family and anointed people. Haven't we? And we've seen people be healed. We have. I'm telling you. And let me say something to you today. The Lord knows. The Lord knows. The Lord knows what your problem is. I want you to notice something. Look at verse 45, and we must hurry on. And he said, who touched me? Now, you'd say, well, he didn't know who touched me. Yes, he did. Did you know he said this for the crowd's sake? But he knew. I believe he locked eyes with her right immediately. When he turned around and he said it for her sake as well, so that she would have an opportunity to come forward. Amen? Amen. And we'll see that here in a minute. But God knows about you. Mm -hmm. My hairs are numbered on my head, and God knows every hair. Do you know God knows when the sparrow falls from the air? He does. He knows when the little creature crosses the road. He knows when you hit it and killed it. I know I'm making you sad now, man. I ain't wrecking my car for no squirrel. No. Uh -uh. I don't care what my insurance looks like. But you listen to what I'm saying to you, but God knows all these things, and God knows about you today. That yeah. He knows what you're facing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He knows what your bills are. I'm going to get real here and get personal. Go ahead. God knows your sickness today. Yeah. Do you know God knows the hidden sickness that may be in you that you don't know about? Yeah. Sure he knows what's coming. Amen. He knew you whether or not you'd be here this morning. He knows those who weren't going to be here and why they're not here. Mm -hmm. When you can't attend church, God knows why. Yeah. No matter what you tell the pastor. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, it don't matter to me what you tell me. It's what you tell God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you be careful how you lie to him. Because mm -hmm. you can't lie to him. That's right. That's right. If you tell the pastor that, you, that your head's blowing off of your shoulders and you're sick and you ain't coming and you go out dancing that night, oh, that's between you and God. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. Yeah. Amen. But sometimes we get caught up with and God lets the pastor and other people find these things out. When you tell me that you're sick and you don't come to church and I see you at Walmart later, there's going to be say, oh, that don't look too good, does it? How many of you know the Bible says that your sins will find you out? Yeah, amen. Amen. God knows today. 
God knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows my heart. He knows my mind today. He knows everything there is to know about us, even the things that we're going to face a year from now. Mm -hmm. He's God. Mm -hmm. So why would you not trust him? Yeah. Why wouldn't you trust him? The God that knows everything, the God that created you, why can't you trust him? The God that saved you, why can't you trust him? You have something to do? Yes. Why can't you why can't you trust him? Huh? Why, why, why can't we trust him? The God that bought me off the slave market of sin and has done more for me than anybody else. Why can I not trust him with my life? Right. Why can I not be 100% sold out and trust in him? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. This is your cousin. Mm -hmm. Her name's Little, we call her Little Vicky. She's in the ICU and she's got pneumonia and a bladder infection. She's also septic, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her daughter reached out by text. That's fine. I mean, you believe that there's a God in heaven that can heal her? He can. Yes, she's on, plus, she's on life support. She's on life support. Honey, I got something to tell you. I believe Little Vicky's son. Yes. Ready to meet the Lord? Let me tell you something, if God don't heal her here, he'll heal her there. He will. I mean, you know that God can heal your wounds. Yeah. Amen. He can. Sometimes when a person in your life that you love dearly passes away, God helps you with that. And I want to say something to you. If you still grieve, don't you worry about that grieving. Death's not something that we ever get over. I'm being honest. Whether it be a friend, whether it be a parent, no matter what it be, you don't ever get over those things. I tell you what happens when you trust Jesus, He moves in. Yeah. Puts that big old arm up around you. He says, Come on. They're in my care. They're in my presence. But you got to keep on living. Their life was for my honor and for my glory. And now you got to live for my honor and my glory. And see, you never get to the point where you ain't walking like this, Paul. And honey, His arm's bigger than mine. And sometimes he reaches down, Curtis, and he says, come on, Curtis. You and Paul can't make it. Watch me carry you. Yeah. He'll say, come on. Come on, Stanley. Watch me carry you. Come on, Stephanie. Watch me carry you. You say, Lord, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. And he reaches down and he says, let me show you how. Amen. I'm going to do the walk. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to touch you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And then other times he reaches down and he says, just trust me. And you like that little baby, and you start taking them steps, and he says, see, you can walk again. Yeah. And you know why we're walking again? It's for his honor and yeah. his glory. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. honor and glory. Praise God. All because one day he stepped up on your shores, and you said, yes, Lord, come into my life, and please forgive me. Amen. 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 And you know what? He's been helping you ever since. Amen. And he'll help you. But remember, Remember, he knows everything there is to know about us. What did he say to this lady? He said, They touched me, but all denied Peter, and they that were with him. Master, the multitude thronged thee, and pressed thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Listen, God knows today. He knows your need today. And look, she's not hid. She realizes it. You're not hid today from God. You're not hid today from the Lord. The Lord knows whatever you're battling. How I many of you know we battle things? Yeah, say, yeah, yeah. And listen, yo, yes, sometimes we, we battle things of the devil. But honey, Jesus knows, amen. And I have something to tell you. The best thing to do when the devil comes around knocking on your door, trying to discourage you, take out the word of God yeah. and say, say, here's the word of God. Here's my promises. Here's the promise of my eternal life. Where are you headed? Amen. And then take him over to the book of Revelation and show him about that chain that's going to be wrapped around him and how he's going to be put in that pit. And then he'll say, oh, yeah, but I can come out after a thousand years. Yeah, they say, but not for long. You go up to the rest of the camp, and Jesus himself is going to knock you down. Amen. 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 
I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. You remind me. And you tell him. You say, oh, Lord, there's coming a day when I'm going to be in the crowd with my Lord. And I'm going to have my new white robe on. And I'm going to be standing there in the, for the honor and glory of Almighty God. And you're going to walk in. And that day you're going to get down just like this right here. And you're going to have to profess before all of God's people that he's Lord and he's King of all. Amen. 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 And then they're going to take you and they're going to trice you into a lake of fire where you'll be tormented and tortured for all of eternity for the things that you've done to me and that you've done to God's people. Yes, right. Amen. Honey, I tell you what, it's time that God's people put Satan on the run. And there ain't but one way to put him on the run, and that's to put him on the run with the Lord. Amen. And with the Lord's word. And stop bowing. Honey, I done told you, we're possessed of the Holy Spirit, and ain't no devil can take over me now. Amen. 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 And I refuse to believe and to surrender to that thinking. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I belong to Jesus. And I'm blood bought and blood covered. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Take that, Satan. Yeah. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Whew, boy, that hurt later. Oh. But, they, but guess what? It was for the honor and glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 We have our moving and our being in Him. I move around today all because of what God's done for me. There's people today that can't move. They give anything to be in God's house. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I'm being honest. Pastor, being honest with you today. The Lord knows. And I want you to see in closing confession and comfort. Oh my goodness. She had to come forward. She had no other choice. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and fell down before him. She declared unto him and before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And look what he says to her. To her. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Because she trusted not. And listen, she trusted Jesus. Didn't have anything to do with his garment. She trusted him. You say, well, I get sick sometimes. Just keep on trusting Jesus. Yeah. I'm being honest. We do get sick, don't we? We never do. We don't mean that I got a lack of faith. This woman was sick for 12 years. Didn't mean that she had a lack of faith. What she do? She just come to Jesus. Amen. And what did he say to her? He said, daughter. Daughter. That makes you believe in him. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? People say, well, for 12 years, she didn't have no faith in God. I don't believe that. Right. I refuse to believe that. You know why? Because she comes forward, and when she confessed, she confessed it in front of people. And the Bible says she confessed for what reason she came. So they've seen this woman, and no doubt she had neighbors and friends that knew that she was sick. So this sickness was for his honor and for his glory. Yeah. Why? Because she come and she confessed. She come and confess. Hey, when you get saved, you confess Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's not for your honor and in your glory. It's for his honor and his glory. Amen. Yes, it is. You want people to see your life and see what a change Jesus has made in you. Why? So they'll want it too. Right. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The man you see standing before you today, that's your pastor. I'm this man because of what Jesus has done. Amen, amen, that's right. And so we have to confess that. She had to come forward mm -hmm. so that people could see the glory of Almighty God. Yes, amen. If you get healed, you need to come forward and say, God healed me. Yeah, God healed me. And that sickness was for his honor and for his glory because he done the healing. People say, well, you've been to the doctor. Yeah, but God used that doctor. Amen. Yeah, used that doctor. God that created everything that we see, why do we think that he can't use a physician? How I many of you know that's what Luke was? Yeah. Luke was a doctor. Wasn't he? Yeah. He was a physician. 
And he was called to be one of Jesus' disciples. Amen. Praise God. You know what he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Go in peace. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Here she comes. <laughs> she confessed. Just like me and you did. We confessed and we found peace with God. Amen. 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 We found peace with God. Listen. You might be sick today. I don't know. There might be something going on with you. There might be a heart problem. There might be a lung problem. Whatever it is, you trust that Jesus knows. God knows today. And if he don't heal you here, he'll heal you back. Amen. Amen. But you remember one thing. Our life brings honor and glory to him. Whether we be sick, whether we be well, no matter what it may be. It's all for his honor and his glory. What did he say about Lazarus? He said, this is the death that will bring honor and glory to God. Mm -hmm. He will. Lord, if you'd only been here, he wouldn't have died. That's true. Remember what he said? For your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't. Right. But this is a death unto God, he says, for his honor and his glory. You just remember that our lives to bring honor and glory to Him. Amen. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, I just said to say, what are you waiting for? You know He wants to heal you today. He wants to heal you. I'm not talking about heal your physical body, but He wants to heal you of the sin sickness. Being lost and undone without God. Being alienated and separated from God. Sin is what separate, and we're born into a life of sin. And it takes the blood atonement to bring us back to God, to reconcile us back to the Lord, amen, and to, the, and to God the Father. And Jesus wants to save you today. Amen. He wants to save you. I feel in my heart somebody's always watching us, either whether it be now or later. That don't know Jesus Christ. I believe everybody in the building this morning confesses to know the Lord. So I believe I want everyone in this building to pray right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's somebody that you know. There's somebody that you know that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. How about you pray for that person right now? I tell you what. You say, Pastor, I can't think of anybody. How about praying for the young man, Torn? Yes. How about praying for him? How about praying for that man that James knows that don't know God, that don't know the Lord? I can't remember his name, but how many of you know Brother James has got a man he put on the prayer list? Tim Wilkinson. That's his name. Y'all pray for him. He's lost and undone without God. There's somebody that we all know. <laughs> that needs to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, there's one heart in this building that I know about, and it's mine. Whatever's going on in your life today, how I many of you know that God wants to help you? He truly does. He wants to help you. Pray for that situation. We don't know what those fire trucks are going down the highway for. But they're, they're going back that way. We don't know why. But that's the situation. And we need to pray. Us as a church family, how many of you know that if we pray, God can move on the scene. He can move right now. Just pray. Pray. We need to pray. Whatever need you have in your life today, you pray. I trust him and God knows, but he wants to talk to you about it. Let's pray. Pray for the needs of this church. Pray for that lost one. As we pray, you mind the Lord. And, and pray for Melissa's cousin, Vicki, that's there in the hospital. Pray for her. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne today, Father, we thank you today. We give you honor, we give you praise and glory. 
we just tell you today, Lord, that we love you. And Father, we thank you. We thank you today, Lord. <coughs> thank you for allowing us to be here, Lord. Once again, we've been able to come into your house and assemble ourselves here that we might worship you, Lord. We thank you and we love you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray now. Pray for the many needs of our church, Father, those who are sick and afflicted. Brother Jerry, Sister Marie, Brother James, Brother Paul, Sister Annette, and Sister Jean, Lord. And Brother Ray today, Father, things going on in their life. Miss Jamie and, and Miss Ann, Father, things happening in their life, Lord. Those things that you know about. I know, Lord, we don't have to tell you, but we're praying, Lord. We're talking to the God of heaven. And we're talking to our Lord and our Savior who can make a change. And you know, Lord, you can make a difference today. So, Father, I just pray for those. I ask you to touch them today, Father, and heal them according to your will, Lord. Because, Lord, our lives is all about bringing honor and glory to you, Lord. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, Lord, it's still for our good and for your honor and your glory. So, Father, I just pray for those. I pray for those who are in attendance today. I ask you to touch their needs, Father. Thank you for leading them this way today, Father. Helping them to get here, Lord, and I ask you to touch their needs. We thank you, Father, for the things that you're doing and how we see you working mightily in our in our little church, Father. And we thank you today. And Father, we pray for this young man, Tori. Father, he's out somewhere today, no doubt, walking the streets. He don't have a home, Lord. He don't have a place to lay his head, Father. Father, I don't believe today that he knows you in the free part of his sin. So, Father, I pray today that you'd save him, Lord, before it's eternity everlasting too late. And Father, help him today. Help him turn his life around, Father. Not that this church may be honored or glorified through it, Lord, but may you get all the honor and all the glory for it, Lord. Because, Lord, if his life turns around, it'll be because of you, Lord. Now, Father, I just pray for this situation, Lord, the, the EMS units, Lord, down the street here, whatever that need is, Father, I pray, dear God, Lord, you meet it. I pray that you touch that need, Father, and put your hand on it. Speak peace unto it, Lord. And Father, we just thank you today. And now, Lord, just go with us as we go our separate ways, Father. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord, according to your will. And we'll be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory by all things, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It was certainly good to be in God's house today. Thank you all for coming. Those of you that made your way out, be careful going back home. Especially if you go that way. I'm not real sure about what's going on. But uh, just be careful going home and, uh, and everything. And as, um, as we find out about uh, Sister Jean and the others and everything, we'll let you know. Uh, just just be in much prayer one for another. And uh, as we find out about little Vicky, we'll let you know about her as well and everything. And, uh, uh, just everyone have a good day and be safe as you go home. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the pastor is going to make your way to the back, and we'll uh, we'll pray, and then we'll be dismissed. All right, let's pray. Our eternal gracious heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this beautiful day of life that you've given us, Lord, for the opportunity that we've had to be in your house, Lord. Now, Lord, bless and touch as we go our separate ways, Father, and just lead us, guide us, and direct us, and bring us back at the next appointed time. 
These things we pray and ask all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen.